foremost, thank you to Pete for this suggestion and all his research he put into this mystery about Dracula the Series, a Canadian TV show filmed in Luxembourg that aired for a single season of 21 episodes. It's low production made for a cheesy, but entertaining and family fun half hour every Saturday from late September 1990 to mid-May 1991. In the 13th episode, Bad Blood, there are three catchy songs that aren't credited anywhere, and the musicians remain a complete mystery. Shazam turns up nothing, and people who actually worked on the show have been contacted, and while many were kind enough to respond, nobody had an answer. Here are the three songs in question. Warning, corny dialogue ahead. <laughs> And we met at a concert of music. And her name was Sophia, which means wisdom. And our auras were as one. And we reached, brother, we reached. And she, and she touched my inner soul. Vincent, that's about me? Everything's about you, Sophie. You and I, together. Being and nothingness. That's from Sartre's book. Have you read Jean-Paul? You mean the Pope? No. Jean-Paul Sartre. He was an existentialist like me. I live for the now. I want you to join me in the now. When? Now? Now? Later? Whenever. I mean, time is fluid. You are liquid and I am air. Together we are solid. Oh, Vincent. You're more beautiful than the celestial orbs. More delicate than summer peaches. Here. I bought you these earrings. Vincent, how could you afford these? I'd beg, borrow, or steal for you, Sophie. That's it. What's going on? If you were able to hear, the third song has no vocals. Being that the actual recording possibly lasted longer than the excerpt used in the scene, this may not have been a true instrumental, but rather maybe a guitar solo mid-song. And the vocals in the first two songs sound similar. As such, all three mysterious songs could be from the same band. Considering Dracula the series was such low budget, very little commercial music was actually used which increases the likelihood of these three songs being from the same band. When reviewing the end credits, Christopher Dedrick was the show's composer, and David Green, associated with Unlimited Productions, was the music supervisor. As such, they'd be the two most likely people to know who these songs belong to. Christopher Dedrick had a recording career which included being a member of the 60s group The Free Design. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2010. However, his widow has been contacted but wasn't able to assist. On the other hand, David Green was contacted successfully by Pete. Green told Pete that he didn't remember the songs that were used, but confirmed they weren't his. He went on to suggest that the songs are most likely a published but possibly unreleased demo. Outside of the show's music department, one helpful response was from someone involved on the accounting side of the series. While they didn't have an answer, they suggested it's more than likely a Canadian band. Aside from acting, cast member Joe Ronsetti is also a musician. However, the songs don't seem to match his music. Last but not least, one of Pete's contacts forwarded his inquiry to one of Dracula's showrunners, Glenn Davis, who was nice enough to review the three songs. Davis didn't know about the songs either, however, he had kept in touch with one of the show's co-producers throughout the decades and just happened to have scheduled an upcoming meeting with him. 
Later that same week, Davis contacted Pete with some answers. At least one of the tracks was a shelved song that had been written and recorded in the 1980s by William Lauren, who was a co-creator of the series Power Play with Davis and also worked in the music industry before television. Lauren confirmed this song was his, but didn't know where the original recording was to prove it. While this is good news, it actually comes with more bad news. Not only did we go from identifying a mysterious song to now searching for a partially lost song, but this revelation also lends credence to some of the concerns heard throughout the Like the Wind search, including a claim by guitarist Billy Knight that his Statues in Motion bandmate Alvin Dean was responsible for the most mysterious song on the internet, but doesn't have any proof of it since so many years have gone by and so many other music projects have come his way that Billy never thought to make attempts to preserve any evidence. While Billy's claims are a whole other discussion for another video, pairing the statues in motion theory with what has been uncovered about the Dracula mystery forces music detectives to accept that some songs will never be recovered. Before giving up on this Dracula mystery, however, it's worth noting that copyright websites show that the publisher, Full Track Music Reg, has associated with William Lauren. So if Lauren doesn't have the full recordings, it's possible that Full Track Music Reg could have a copy of at least one of the songs featured in the Bad Blood episode. As for David Green's aforementioned company, Unlimited Productions, they only kept backups for five years. So if the songs happen to be affiliated with Unlimited Productions, they would have gotten rid of the songs around 1996 since Dracula the series stopped production in 1991. In the end, there's still hopes that Full Track Music Reg might have copies, William Lauren locates them in his private collection, or someone who worked with Lauren during these 1980s recording sessions might have copies of their own. This will be the last time.